Hey guys, welcome to the fourth video of my series on creating a WhatsApp bot using Twilio and Python. And till now, we have been successful in creating a WhatsApp bot which is working on the cloud and can reply to any kind of WhatsApp queries by the WhatsApp users which have subscribed to our WhatsApp sandbox at any time. So that is what we have been able to achieve till now. But right now, we know that our WhatsApp bot that we have created is quite dumb. It is just an echo bot which can just echo whatever the whatever the whatsapp user is saying to us so it is just replying back with the same message to the user which is just a dumb bot so what we need is that we need to provide it some intelligence and how do we provide that intelligence is by making it a conversational bot so for making a conversational bot we need to use a conversational engine so what is a conversational engine a conversational engine is kind of a program which can be trained to give replies for specific queries in specific contexts. So that is what a conversational engine is. And in order to make conversational engines, we will be using a very nice web service, which is called Dialogflow, which is actually being developed by Google itself. So Dialogflow is what we are gonna use in this video to make our WhatsApp bot conversational. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so in order to create a conversational WhatsApp bot, what we need to do is that we need to first of all create a conversational agent on Dialogflow.com and then we have to integrate that agent with our Flask application. So in this way, we'll be able to create a conversational WhatsApp bot. So the first step that we need to do is that we have to log in into the Dialogflow console. So this is how the Dialogflow.com looks like and you can click on go to console and then you will be able to see your console. So this is how my console looks like right now. So now the first step is to create a new agent. So you can always create a new agent by clicking on here, create a new agent. Okay. But one thing is that you can also create a new agent through some pre-built agents. So there are some pre-built agents which have been already trained for some specific purposes. So instead of training a new agent in this video, I'm just going to show you how you can use a pre-built agent. So I'm going to use a pre-built agent, which can, let's say, tell jokes. So I'm just going to use this one. So I'm just going to import this agent and I will have to link it to one of my Google projects. So you can create a new one or you can just link it to any one of that you want to link it to. And then I will just click OK. And now my agent is getting ready. So yes, so the agent joke was successfully imported to my account. And now I will click on proceed to agent. So this is how the dashboard of a particular, um, you can say agent looks like a dialogue flow agent is less like an application on dialogue flow, just like you had Heroku application on Heroku, which is um, running your Flask application. Similarly on dialogue flow, you have multiple agents. Um, a single agent can be a single conversational entity. And right now I have jokes hyphen one. This is the name of my conversational agent. Now the thing is that let us try it out. It has been trained a bit. So let us try it out how it responds, how it responds. So let me just say hello. So let us see what we get. It is saying hello, I have got some jokes for you. Would you like to hear one? So yeah, that's a nice response because that is quite conversational. So now let me just try tell me a joke. So let's try it out now. So yeah, so look at that. It is now giving me a joke. So now I can just pass on this joke on WhatsApp to the WhatsApp user. Right. So in this way, we are able to um, use this agent, which is actually pre-built already. So we are just going to learn how to integrate it now. OK, so in order to integrate it, what we need to do is that the first step is to open the service account of your project in the Google Cloud Console. OK, so the first step is that you will need to go to the settings of your agent by clicking on this particular button and then you will have to click on service account. So let me just click on it. And now it is now going to open my service account on Google Cloud Platform. So basically, I want to be able to use my Dialogflow agent through some Python code. So for that, I will need to provide some authentication. So I'm just going to see how can I authenticate my Dialogflow agent through some Python program. So this is what we're going to see here. So this is the Google Cloud Platform console. And these are the service accounts right now related with my current Dialogflow agent. So I'm going to create a new service account which I'll be using for authentication. So service account name, um, let us say it as test or let me just call it jokes. 
we can call it anything let me just call it jokes or anything and service account description just a um, for python programs anything you can give and then we can just click on create so this is my service account details select a role what role do you want to give to this particular um, service account so you can just make it a, an owner it will give you full access to all the resources or depending upon your needs you can select a more constrict uh, a more restricted one and then continue and now my service account is getting generated and yeah so grant users access to this service account so service account users role so this is these things are optional so we can just leave them but what is important right now is that we need to create a key so a key is just like a kind of a password or let's say a file which can be used for authentication so we are gonna download our key in json format so i'm just gonna click on create so what will happen now is that this this is the name of my key so a key got created for me and now i'm gonna click on close so this key this json file contains the key which i will be using for authentication while i want to use the dialogflow agent through my python program so that is what we have done so so yeah so that is done and now what are we going to do next so in my whatsapp bot tutorial that i have here i have already saved my key here so i have already saved my key so what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to use it so let us see how to use it so the first step is that you will need to install the python client for dialog flow so the python client for dialog flow needs to be installed first so what you can do is that you can simply open your terminal and simply type a pip command which is to install dialogflow pip install dialogflow so this will install dialogflow for you so i already installed it so once it is done for you so we can move on to the next step so now the next step is that we have to um, first of all specify or create a new environment variable called google application credentials which is the path to your um, let's say which is a path to your authentication key the json file so right now um, my the, the notebook in which i want to try it out is for making a conversational bot so it is in this folder in this folder right now so in the same folder i have this particular key so i have just specified it like this here okay so this will just set it and other than that i am going to import dialogflow underscore version 2 as dialogflow and then i'm going to create a session client i'm going to set my project id so how do we get the project id so in order to get get the project id you can just copy this project id from here right so this is your project id so for the this particular json key which i have all which i have downloaded previously my project id was this one so i'm just going to go with that you can just copy the newly created project id for your new dialogflow agent from here in the settings you can go to project id so yeah so once that is done now here is a utility function which can detect intent from text so this is a function which will take any text it will take a session id and the default language i have set as english and then it will just call the dialogflow agent apis it will generate a response for your query and it will return the result so this is as simple as that so now we can just try it out so response is called to detect intent from text let's say say joke and here the session id that i'm doing here is that um, the session id can be the phone numbers of the users so that's important that you can use the phone numbers of your users as the session ids so why do we need session id session id helps to um, keep a chain of conversation going on for example let's say your bot asks you like would you like to hear a joke then you say yes then how does your bot respond to that yes so that is the context that we need to maintain so for that maintaining that context we need session ids so that's why you can just keep um, let's say the phone number of a user as its session id so right now i'm just putting anything as a session id and i'm running it so this is the response that i got so response dot fulfillment text will give me the response so the only substitute for good manners is fast reflexes so this is a response to let's say say joke so if you say joke then this is how the bot will reply and you can also get the display name of the intent intent is um, the intent 
which was selected for resp uh, responding to a particular query. So there can be multiple intents that are available. For example, jokes.get is an intent which gets triggered when the user tries to say something like tell me a joke, say a joke, anything like that. Similarly, there are welcome intent which are um, triggered when someone tries to say hi, hello, all kind of things. So all these things are covered in dialog flow. So we get that yes, jokes.get is the intent and with what confidence was that intent detected? You can get that as well. So it is 100%, 1.0. So yeah, so this was all about how can you um, implement a Dialogflow agent? How can you integrate a Dialogflow agent in your Python program? And now it's time that we put it all into our Flask application. So let's see what we can do now. So the first thing that we have to do is that in the Flask application, you will have to put your key like this and then you will have to create a new file in your project folder which I am just which I am just saving as utils.py and now in the utils.py what are we gonna do in the utils.py I'm gonna paste all this code so this is a function for detecting intent from text what else we have the response so this all this response thing I'm gonna put it in a utility function which I'm gonna call fetch reply so fetch reply is a function which takes query and the session ID and this is the function which we'll be calling so what will this function do it will take any query and the response will be available for query and this session ID and another thing that we're gonna do is that we will be returning the response dot fulfillment text so response dot fulfillment text is the response to the query in the text form so yeah so that is all about it so in this way we have just created a utility file and then here we can just do from utils we can import fetch reply so this is a function that we need and fetch reply has been done so here where we are just setting a message for our reply what we'll be doing is fetch reply or let me just make it more clearer let's say we also want to get the phone number of the user so the phone number is available at request dot form dot get um, it's f r o m capital f r o m so the data that you get from the user the request dot form gives you all the post data that we are getting that contains many key value pairs one of them is body which is the message that you received from is the um, the phone number of the person from which you received the message and so on. So what will be my reply? Reply will be fetch reply for the message for a given phone number. That's it. So this is my reply. So once that is done, I can just set it as my message for my response. And yeah, that's all about it. So in this way, we have just set everything. Everything is ready now and we are ready to test it. So now let us test it. So for testing, what I'm going to do is I am just going to let me just check the status right now so I have just modified app.py I have added these files one more thing that I need to do is that I need to um, install Dialogflow in my I need to install Dialogflow in my virtual environment as well so in the last in the previous um, when I show you previously how to install Dialogflow that was on my global environment right now I am in my virtual environment there as well I will be installing Dialogflow so that I can use it there as well so pip install Dialogflow doing here and then I will have to regenerate my requirements.txt because it contains a new requirement now so I will have to do that as well so what I will be doing is pip freeze requirements.txt and that is done let us check out requirements.txt so in the requirements.txt we have dialog flow as well here it is here is the dialog flow and also don't forget to remove package resources this thing so this is actually a bug which needs to be removed and that's it so this makes my requirements.txt file ready as well so what is the git status right now I have modified two files and I have added two new files so let me just add them all and let me just put a commit message which is added dialog flow so added dialog flow is my message commit message and now i'm gonna push 
my latest changes to my remote repository on my Heroku application. So git push Heroku master. So this will just push it to the master branch of my Heroku application. So look at that, it's happening. And now it is just gonna get uploaded. And it is now getting compressed. So in just a few moments time, it will be live. So now I think we can try it out. So let us just first of all check that everything is working fine. If we are able to just do wbot99.herogweb.com. So first of all, wbot99.herogweb.com. So that is giving hello world, which means that everything is working fine. So now let me just send a message to my WhatsApp bot. So let me send a message. Let's say, tell me a joke. So let's see if we get a reply or not. And also, in the meantime, let me open my Heroku logs as well so that I can check it out what's happening behind the scenes. We got a reply by the way. So let me just do Heroku logs. So we got the reply by the way, which is here. So if swimming is so good for your figure, how do you explain ways? Okay. Yeah. So it is just going to do well if I just say hello. Let's see what happens. It will just reply something like, hi there, want to hear a joke, something like that, maybe. It's a bit slow, we know, it's a bit slow because there is a long chain. The message has first to go to the WhatsApp server, then go to Twilio, then from Twilio to the sandbox, and then to my Heroku application, and then it has to travel back because I have to give the reply as well. So Heroku application to the sandbox, to Twilio, to WhatsApp server, and then finally to me. So yeah, it's a bit slow, we know that. So yeah, we got that. Greetings, would you like to hear a joke? So yeah, it's working fine. So yes, I would like to hear a joke. So let's see how it works. So it might take a bit of time, but it works, yeah. So that's all about creating a conversational bot. So let me remove it. So yeah, so it is working fine. I am just saying yes, and it is giving me a joke. So that's fine. It's working pretty fine. So in this way, we have made a nice conversational bot, a nice conversational WhatsApp bot, and I hope you enjoyed the process of making this particular WhatsApp bot. And if you still have any doubts, you can put them in the comment section below. And if you liked this series, then don't forget to give a like on this video and share it with all your friends and subscribe to my channel. And that's it from this video. Thanks for watching.